Live from Princeton Stadium, it's college football on ESPN3 as the Cornell Big Red take on the Princeton University Tigers. Hi, everybody. Along with former Delaware head coach Casey Keeler, I'm Dave Popkin. Great to have you along. A gorgeous autumn afternoon for a college football game. Now, this Ivy League rivalry dates back to 1891, but these are two 21st century offenses. Cornell had a close call last week. They scored 35 but lost to Brown. They're off to a 1-5 and five start. And Princeton, meanwhile, 5-1, and one, a tremendous offensive team, number one in the Ivy League. Yeah, you know, Dave, it's a big game for both teams. For Cornell's, for Cornell, it's an opportunity to take their win streak over Princeton to four and also build some momentum for first-year head coach David Archer into the 2014 offseason. And for Princeton, it's about seizing an opportunity. They were in a great position last year to win a conference championship, and they let it slip away. They need to get this one today because they're in the exact same position. Two terrific starting quarterbacks today for Cornell. Jeff Matthews is a senior, a big kid, right-hander. The NFL scouts are here to see him today. Yeah, I ran to about 12 uh, NFL scouts on the field earlier today. Um, he's big, he's strong. Um, he's rewriting all the passing records in the Ivy League. And he accounts for, get this, an incredible 90% of the Cornell's total offense. And Quinn Epperly, wow, what a special athlete he is. Coming off a six-touchdown performance against Harvard, and he's the reigning Sports Network National Offensive Player of the Week. Epperly, a lefty, more mobile the Offensive Player of the Week in the Ivy League, three weeks running. Princeton trying to get off to a 4-0 start in the Ivy League for the first time in 18 years. We'll see if they can do it next, only on ESPN3. Dave Popkin and Casey Keeler back with you here in Princeton, New Jersey. Ivy League football matchup today. Cornell trying to win their first game in the league play and snap a five-game losing streak. Princeton has been the surprise team in the league. Picked fifth. They are tied for first with Penn right now and a game with Penn looming next week for the Tigers. But David Archer and the Big Red are in front of them today. Archer is the youngest head coach in Division I. He is about to turn 31 years of age. Yeah, I was there. I was uh, a head coach at uh, 33 years of age and... Uh, you know, the fortunate thing for me was I took over a team that was pretty talented and we went and played for a national championship. You know, Cornell's in a little bit of a, a, a transition period right now and, and David's working through his way through. And there's uh, Coach Serace, uh, who's had tremendous success this year. Um, and they're a little bit of a surprise, uh, but, uh, you know, they were in this position last year where they uh, were right in the hunt for a conference championship. And then, you know, Dave, this was the ball game last year that they will all point to and say it kind of, uh, uh, they let that one get away. And, and normally when you're playing a, a one in five uh, team in, on, on your schedule, you, you think you possibly could you know, look to the following week. But uh, uh, those guys remember last year uh, they lost a chance at a conference championship because of the loss uh, to the Big Red. Bob Serace of Princeton coming off one of the biggest wins in his tenure last week at Harvard by three. It's been a great series between these two. Eight of the last nine, 18 of the last 23 have been decided by a touchdown or less, many of those a field goal or less. So that's the history between the two. It dates back 122 years overall. Nolan Beek handles the kicking duties for the Princeton Tigers. Cornell won the toss and will receive Luis Uceta, the freshman. Got a little bit of lane. Up to the 26. That's a 24-yard return for Uceta, who took over recently for Ben Rogers, the sophomore, returning kicks. And number nine in the center of your screen is the center of the Cornell football universe. Casey mentioned it in the open. 90% of the offense accounted for by Matthews. He's thrown for over 2,000 yards already and over 10,000 yards in his career. He recently passed the Princeton offensive coordinator, James Perry, for that all-time yardage mark. And he's about to pass Perry in TDs as well. Completes the first pass, no surprise there. Ty Bostain, the senior tight end from Washington Crossing, PA, gains about three. I know you like Matthews a lot, Casey. Yeah, yeah, and they're going a little up-tempo here, and, and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll... It's 
skill players for Cornell. Luke Hagee will see the ball a lot as a runner and as a pass catcher. That's Hagee there. Shy of the first down, he got about five yards. And the offensive line, late shuffle there with one injury. So Andrew Weber will start at right tackle. Zach Wilk, one of the leaders, along with Brad Wagner. Big third down conversion here. They're all big, big third down conversions in a game like this. Seeing double tight, two backs in the backfield. Cornell 35% on the year on third down. And they do pick it up here, out to the 40, and an awkward fall that time. By Dustin Dillard, the senior. He does get the first down. And Dillard is hobbling, and he can't get off the field. There's the defense for Princeton, Matt Landry, Greg Sotirianos, and the NFL prospect, Karan Reed. Jason Ray, an outside linebacker, will blitz a lot. You get a look at Dillard, who went down awkwardly after picking up the first. It looked like Dustin got bent back a little bit there, and uh, that, that uh, he, he reached for his knee. Uh, tried to get off the field uh, on his own uh, accord, and... Uh, Looks like uh, he's trying to get off now. It's exactly what Cornell does not need. They don't have a lot of depth in their backfield. In fact, they only rush the ball for an average of 40 yards per game. They pass it 350 yards per game, and there is the yep. awkward fall. And the interesting thing with uh, Cornell is that uh, you know over the last six weeks, they have come out trying to run the football every single week, and then they don't get that rushing game going, and they, they, they put everything on Jeff Matthews' uh, shoulders. But... Uh, uh, early on, I think you'll see uh, some patience and you'll see them trying to run the football uh, at this uh, Princeton defense. Luke Hagee is the lone back. Bostain in motion, batted down and intercepted. And Princeton has the ball. That's been the bugaboo for Cornell this year. Call Ron Reed, we just talked about him, the top prospect in FCS. It was deflected at the line by Dorian Williams, and Reed has the interception. Yeah, they had the little bubble screen going out to the left, and uh, some penetration inside. Ball gets tipped in the air, and uh, a great play by, by Gronda to, to, to make that catch. Yeah, right there, guys. It's good. And what they had going on there, they had a, a, a run-pass option up. Uh, Matthews decided to take the pass option outside, and uh, there was some penetration. Quinn hey, Everly the, is the quarterback the rope, for Freddy. Princeton. And he completes the first one out to Matt Costello. Leans across the 25. And that's a seven-yard pickup for Costello, the junior from Everett, Massachusetts. Epperly, unbelievably efficient, completes nearly 71% of his passes. And you see 15 touchdowns and one interception. Hands here to DeAndre Atwater. Atwater starting for the injured Brian Mills, and he picks up the first down for the Tigers. You know, that's one of the things that uh, Princeton does have. They have a lot of depth. You know, this offense is built on personnel. It's about getting the ball to their athletes in space, and they do have some really good athletes, probably the best athletes in the Ivy League. And uh, this is an offense that's very creative and up-tempo, and you'll see a lot of different things on the course of the day. They play a lot of two-quarterback and three-quarterback offense early in the year, but Epperly is really bubble to the top as the super performer for the Tigers completes another pass to Costello and he is bumped out of bounds out to 12 got about eight yards yeah Jared Backus the uh, defensive coordinator for Cornell uh, who was at Princeton last year uh, you'll see him mix it up a lot that was a that was a max drop there uh, they brought three defenders on the pass rush and then dropped eight and uh, that's 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 what you'll anticipate a lot of different things out there by the Cornell defense the skill position players, Dre Nelson getting some early time here, and he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage by a swarming big red defense. Trey Miner, a senior from Columbia, South Carolina, one of the tacklers on the scene. It's the rest of the offense. Roman Wilson has the biggest stats in the receiving core and a veteran offensive line. These guys have basically played together for the last 20 games, and that's helped this offense grow. A little confusion out there with Princeton. Uh, had 12 guys uh, on the field, uh, so that's going to be a substitution infraction on the offense. Broke the huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty remains third down. That'll push it back to third and eight. Princeton 
44% converting third downs this year. That's first in the Ivy League. And more importantly, they're 90% in the in the what they call the orange zone or the red zone. And 82% and of those have been touchdowns. So this is an area that they, they have a plan. And, and teams that are great in the red zone uh, usually have a plan. You look at the Denver Broncos. They have a plan when they get in that area. Terrific in that orange zone. Epperly has time, has a man, complete. Roman Wilson down to the seven yard line. That is a first down. Tackled by Brett Bueller, the two year captain for the Big Red. Yeah, a little flat route and curl combination. Uh, you know, one of those 12 yard kind of routes gets the first down. And Epperly is very accurate, you know, steps up in the pocket. A lot of, a lot of functional space for him. Uh, offensive line has done a great job all year protecting this quarterback. First and goal from the seven. Epperly, time again, has Wilson, and he is in for the touchdown. Princeton strikes first. They take advantage of the interception by Karan Reed, and Roman Wilson has his 10th touchdown of the year. Yeah, now they'll line up quickly here, and they'll put some pressure on the uh, on the defense, and it's not like they're going to go for a two-point or, 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 or kick the extra point. And now they will attempt the extra point. A very quick six play drive, 31 yards. Nolan Beek to attempt the extra point. It is up and good. 7 0 Princeton. That drive took them only two minutes and 20 seconds. And that's par for the course for the Tigers. 10.52 yeah. left in the first. Bob's a race. And his Tigers on top of Cornell, 7-0. Quinn Epperly's 16th touchdown pass of the year versus only one interception. Princeton with the number one offense in the Ivy League, and they were able to capitalize on the early turnover. David Archer won his debut against Bucknell. And since then, the Big Red have lost five in a row. A couple of close calls. Nolan Beek kicking off to Luis Yuseta. And he is going to kneel on it wisely for a touchback. There are about eight Tigers in his face. Jeff Matthews was batted down and intercepted his last time out on the field. Ninth time he's been intercepted this year. Dorian Williams got him with a safety blitz. Matthews, the first three-year captain in Cornell history. He's an All-American, All-Ivy League. Out of the empty backfield. Complete to his favorite receiver, Grant Galatly. And he's out of bounds at the 30. Picks up five yards. Yeah, empty backfield. You know, they're going to spread this field and let Matthews sort of just uh, uh, get his read. One of the things you'll see during the course of this game is a lot of crossing routes also. And I think what you'll see is Princeton play a little bit more zone than they typically would play because of all those rub routes with, uh, with the offense. Chris Lenz in motion. Princeton, five defensive backs here. And Matthews throws complete. It's Galatly again and pushed out of bounds. That's a penalty against Mike Zuli and the Tigers, and they'll tack on 15 more. So Cornell quickly into Princeton territory. You just one of those simple bubble routes, but the receivers did a great job blocking outside. And then we get the uh, dead ball. Personal foul. And you just Play can't hit, do that. You number know. seven of the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. High school, college, pro football, they're trying to find ways to, to decrease the number of injuries. Right now, there, there's a record number of pro players, just to give you an example, that are on injured reserve. And, you know, those, those spearings, those late hit out of bounds, uh, all those kind of things, you know, we have to stop. And this is an example of uh, uh, get 15 yard penalty on that. 
Galatly a career day last year against Princeton, 215 receiving yards. That last catch went for 15, plus 15 more on the penalty. So a 30-yard pickup. Trips to the left here for Matthews, so he goes right. And it's complete to Galatly again, who's his Wes Welker kind of receiver. He's out of bounds at the 35. It'll be second and five. Yeah, don't be surprised if Matthews goes to the, the short side or the, or the weak side a lot and, when they're an empty. You know, when you put those three receivers to one side, that middle linebacker is going to open to that third receiver side. And it opens up some, some interesting voids on that weak side. And, and the thing with Matthews, he's a guy who can read full, full field read, but uh, look for a lot of short side throws today. Bostain, the tight end in motion. He's blocking for Luke Hagee, and Hagee pops it outside for a first down and is buried at the 29-yard line. What a hit that time. Mike Zuli again, helped out by Anthony Gaffney. Yeah, you know, last time we were here, Zuli was all over the field also. A very physical player. Uh, Roy, Roy heart, heart and soul, this defense. And, uh, and that's, that's what you call sizing him up and, and, and going through his numbers. Not even six minutes gone by, and we've seen a lot of fireworks already. Princeton with a 7-0 lead. Cornell with the ball. Matthews throws complete to Hagee. Not much there. Spins forward for three, maybe four yards. Tackled by Anthony Gaffney and Elijah Mitchell. Well, yeah, I know Princeton wants to get Matthews off the spot. You know, puts a pressure on moving him around. Yeah, but one of the things about this Cornell offense you'll see a lot is they're going to a lot of three-step drops, rocker step drops. It was just like a rocker step back at the ball out of his hands. A lot of quick pace things that you can't get to the quarterback on. And that's uh, the success they're having right now. No. Jason Hoteling is the offensive coordinator. His philosophy, get the ball to the best players, no matter what. And they'll do it here. Matthews to Galatly. Eludes one tackle and fights his way across the 20 for a first down. Yeah, you know, Galatly's as good as advertised. You know, what you saw there was, was a, a run-pass option. And uh, by the numbers, you're going to see that there's this two-on-two -two out here. So they're going to get a block to the outside, and then the Galatly... Uh, you know, make make his way downfield, and uh, a lot of this offense will be built on the numbers. If we have good numbers outside, let's throw the football. If we like our numbers inside, let's run the football. Five receivers here for Matthews in the empty backfield. Galatly, by the way, four catches already. Matthews now changes the play at the line. They're on him, and he's down. A sack for Princeton, Garrett Light. Yeah, Princeton comes with some A-gap pressure, and uh, on, on the, the dummy cadence, you know, Matthew saw that and changed the protection, but uh, there must have been a miscommunication because the left guard stepped out uh, when he should have uh, taken that A-gap pressure coming. Garrett Light, 20 tackles in his last three games, really stepping up in this his junior season. 40 tackles, that's fourth on the team. Matthews, under pressure again, hands off on a draw. And Hagee is shy of the first down. Mike Zuli with another tackle. Light was there to help him. You know, Hagee's a real complete back. Uh, does a good job blocking. Uh, in the backfield for pass protection and had a had a hundred yards receiving uh, against Colgate um, and obviously he's a pretty good running back too and uh, um, that's the kind of guy you need in this offense a guy who can multitask and he, he <laughs> hey, he's pretty good third and 14 Five receivers again, Hagee in motion. Matthews going for it all, over the head of Bostain. It's fourth down. Yeah, Steve Herbert, the Princeton defensive coordinator, told me before the game that uh, they, they need to, to get Matthews off the spot. They gotta make him move around. They gotta make him feel uncomfortable, get some pressure on him. And uh, you can see they're gonna come inside again with some A-gap pressure. That's the quickest way to get to him and uh, make him throw the ball just a, a tick early on that. Cornell has had some kicking problems this year, so Joe Pirick, a freshman, will attempt his first career field goal out of the hold of Ben Rogers from 39 yards. It has the distance, and it's perfect. 
So Cordell gets on the board. They trail at seven to three. Joe Pierrick splits the uprights. Ivy League football here on ESPN3. Along with Casey Keeler and our ESPN crew, Dave Popkin back with you at Princeton. Bob Serace and the Tigers leading it 7-3. 6-13 left in the first quarter. Princeton trying to go to 4-0 in the Ivy League. They're tied for first with the Penn Quakers right now. Princeton 5-1 overall. John Wells handles the kickoff duties for the Big Red. Last drive for them, 39-yard field goal for Joe Pirick, the first in his career. And a booming kick by Wells, and that's a touchback. On their last drive, Princeton was helped out by their defense. Dorian Williams got penetration, batted it down. Karan Reed, his first career interception. And then Quinn Epperly went to work. A couple of key completions to Matt Costello, and then his favorite target, Roman Wilson. Yeah, they went empty set um, with a single, with, with a quarterback as athletic as Epperly. You have to really think about uh, that that run. They went to the right left and uh, got single coverage with Roman Wilson. And they'll take single coverage all day long. Here's an interesting formation right now by Princeton, huh? It's like, hey guys, we're over here. <laughs> So much variety in their offense. And Everly hands it off. Tigers keep it on the ground with DeAndre Atwater. And, and, and here they go again. And it's, a, and it's all about numbers. It's all about numbers. He's going to read the numbers, see if he likes something. Philadelphia Eagles did some of this early in the year. And Quinn Everly still has it. He faked it to Atwater and busts it up to midfield. Everly, such a mobile quarterback. You know, th what they're doing there, they're going what we call on me. In other words, they put a formation out there, and then they'll decide what the play is going to be based on what the defense alignment is. 19-yard gain for Everly. Kendrick Bostic, another quarterback, goes in motion here, and he is open, and Bostic makes the catch. And the interesting thing with this Princeton offense is you very, very rarely see a team play with this pace, but also with the volume of plays. There's a lot of plays with this Princeton offense. Little sweep action here, and then the pass to the sideline. Call it second and two, an eight-yard pickup for Bostic. There's a first down. Tigers, Dre Nelson, a sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, has another Princeton first down. Yeah, we call this warp speed what's going on right now. Uh, the Princeton offense is in, in a very, very high up-tempo uh, where they're uh, snapping the ball, uh, usually with uh, you know, plenty of time left on that shot clock, usually about 10 seconds, 15 seconds into it. Epperly yeah. throws complete. Seth DeVal tackled out near that number 42 on the field here at Princeton Stadium. The 42 honors Dick Kazmaier, who will be... Honored at halftime, Kazmaier passed away in August. One of the all-time greats here for the Tigers, the only number that they have retired in football. That was an eight-yard gain by DeVal. Yes. And Epperly, again, hands off to Atwater. First down, Tigers. Now, actually, Epperly caught, kept that one that time. <laughs> Both of us were looking for the, the inside zone run. He's like David Copperfield out there with a sleight of hand. Epperly under pressure, throws, complete. Matt Costello at the five, and that's close to another Princeton first down. Yeah, well, I talked earlier about the high volume of plays, sprint left and throw back right, wide receiver to the right side, so it's coming across the field, puts his foot in the ground, angles back towards the corner. Again, a lot of creativity with this offense. Not only the tempo, but just the sure volume of plays that they run. You rarely ever see this in an up-tempo offense. Costello's third catch. That was for 13 yards. Look at this formation. Epperly running it right up the gut, nosing toward the goal line. And he is just short. Maybe the one-foot line. And that's the thing when you have a, a tailback 
basically playing quarterback at times because that's how talented Epperly is. Uh, you can go in these kind of unique formations and run sort of a zone look with an extra blocker inside with, the, with the, almost like a power. Epperly go. going to run it again, and that is too easy. His 12th rushing touchdown of the year. Princeton takes a 13-3 lead. Yeah, Epperly was on the outside zone there. Uh, again, looked at the numbers, saw, saw where the advantage was, and he called an outside zone. And Princeton goes for two, and they get it. You never know out there. Tyler Roth, the holder, is able to punch it in. They complete a nine-play, 75-yard drive with an Epperly touchdown and a Roth two-point conversion. 15 to three, the Tigers are pouring it on. Back with more on ESPN3 after this. <laughs> Quinn Epperly and Princeton continue to pour it on with that kitchen sink offense, Casey Keeler. I don't think they've run the same play twice. No, it, it's really amazing. Typically, when you think of these up-tempo offenses, you see a lot of repeated plays, a uh, very low play volume, uh, just because they, 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 uh, that's who they are. They want to simplify the defense and, and uh, simplify the offense. But these guys do a great job of personnel groupings, uh, and uh, it's really impressive. The freshman, Luis Uceta, brings it back to the 24-yard line for the Big Red. That is where Jeff Matthews and Cornell will get it started here, down 15 to three. Incidentally, the last touchdown by Epperly, his 12th rushing TD of the year. That's the seventh most in school history. The record, Keith Elias back in 93, he had 19, and I think Epperly might pass him. Yeah, absolutely. And 70, yeah, 75 yards, you know, Epperly is, is the key in this whole thing. Uh, his versatility gives a, uh, Gives the offensive coordinator a lot of opportunities to uh, be creative. Five receivers again for the senior, Jeff Matthews. Out of Camarillo, California. He throws incomplete, nearly intercepted. Bill Baia, the safety, was back there in coverage. You see Princeton... Uh, you know, get a little pressure with uh, with their outside guys. They brought five, uh, two outside rushers, uh, made that ball come out a hair early. And again, you know, talking to the Princeton staff before the game, they, they just don't think they can let Jeff Matthews sit back there and, and feel comfortable. They have to find things to put some pressure on him. Galatley did a good job to prevent the interception. Luke Hagee for a yard or two up the middle. Chris Pondo, one of the tacklers for Princeton. Ian McGeary, another second teamer, was in there on the play. A sophomore from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Saw David Archer. He doesn't have many local guys. A, a national recruiting base. A lot of players from California, from Georgia, even as a player from Poland. Yeah, yeah, and they feel pretty good about what the recruiting classes have looked like uh, in terms of last year and going into this year. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, Cornell is a prince of the pens. They, they can recruit nationally because of uh, the great academics they are. Timeout, Cornell. Timeout called by the Big Red, their first. As Bill Broadhurst, the referee, gives us the word. They need to think about this on third and seven, deep in their own end. 2.42 left in the first quarter. Bob Sarais coaching his alma mater. He went away for a while, was an assistant for the Cincinnati Bengals. And now he's back in his fourth year as the head man. And He's really got this thing clicking. He, he really does, and uh, he, he just was so thrilled to have an opportunity to come back and coach his alma mater. Um, so many great memories here. He, he, he met his wife here. Uh, you know, his, uh, his brother coaches up the, up the road, uh, and his father is, is retired just down the road. And uh, so it's, uh, he's a real family guy, and, and this, is, uh, this has been a great experience, him coming back and coaching his alma mater, just like David Archer. He's getting a chance to coach his alma mater. And... Um, you know, I, I did it. You know, I went back to Delaware and coached, uh, coached there, and uh, it's really special when you can go back and coach uh, a place that you love. They were both offensive linemen for their respective schools. Galatly in motion on third and seven. 
Hagee. Hagee has the first down on a couple more out to the 38-yard line for Cornell. Yeah, well-designed play. Uh, ran the motion across the field. Uh, they recognized it was man coverage uh, because the defender went with them. Uh, bubble screen left, faked it, and came back with the slip screen to the right. Uh, and again, both these offenses have a lot of creativity to them and a lot of different dimensions and depth to them. And it's going to be a fun game, game to watch. 11-yard gain by Hagee. Bostain in motion. They'll hand it to Luke Hagee. And he's gobbled up by Elijah Mitchell, Garrett Light, and others for the Tigers. A short pickup. And, and you see Cornell is in what we call a lot of 11 personnel. That means they have a tight end and three wide receivers on the field. But that tight end can split out wide. He's athletic enough to do that. But they also can bring him back in motion, and he can become a blocker. So now you have a two-back set. So, again, we talked about versatility. There's some versatility with this Cornell offense also. Four receivers here. Hagee in the backfield. And that is nearly intercepted. Matthews has been a little loose with the football. Matt Ahrens, one of the... Tigers there in coverage. He is a sophomore strong safety out of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Yep, and you know, this is great defensive scheme, and having your players understand exactly what's going on. There's a blitz on. They're going to be able to get to the quarterback. They have more than, they, than Cornell can block, so you know the routes have to be short, and that's when a defensive back tries to make a, make a big play, and that's where your pick six has come. We have seen more variety from Cornell offensively, a little bit more Hagee running the ball, short receptions, not putting it all on Matthews' shoulders. There, Matthews completes it to Hagee. First down and a bunch more into Princeton territory down to the 36. Gaffney and Ahrens save the touchdown. Yeah, they catch him in an all-out blitz, and the, the running back uh, leaked out, uh, and no one, no one was responsible for him. Um, and that's what happens, you know, it's, it's feast or famine with, with, uh, with max blitzes. Uh, if you get to the quarterback, it's a big sack, and sometimes you create a fumble or an interception. But at the same time, uh, you, there are some holes there. It's a big field, and they, they got their running back out of the backfield for a big game. More than twice as many receiving yards than rushing yards for the tailback Hagee this year. That catch was good for 23 yards. Cornell with the ball trailing 15-3, to three, a minute left in the first. Matthews, flushed, sacked. Jason Ray, now three and a half sacks on the year. Yeah, great, great coverage on the perimeter, and it really was uh, a coverage sack. Uh, Matthews is trying to get the ball of his hand quickly, nothing there. And, and typically, you know, you tell your quarterback on those rocker step throws, if there's nothing there, be prepared to throw it away because you usually don't have time to swing back around and throw the ball to the other side. Those are not full field reads, David. Those are reads where you're looking one side, you make that decision, you throw the ball there or throw it away. It's what Cornell's trying to work with Matthews on. They say he can make all the throws, just working with her on quicker decisions, quicker reads. That's complete to Hagee. He's been the safety valve for the red and brings it down to the 33. Got about six. And it's a great way, these, these screen routes, to, to try to slow slow down that Princeton front four and also slow down their blitzing. Uh, but what, what a great job Hagee did in space in terms of letting his blockers, you know, get out in front of him, had to poise, put his foot in the ground, got up north-south, and now it's third and makeable. Cornell will have a third and five when we come back with the second quarter of play here at Princeton. The Tigers lead it 15 to three over Cornell here in Ivy League action. No, those aren't pocket protectors or fanny packs for Cornell. Those are the plays and not just the quarterback wearing them. Yeah, the, the receivers and the quarterback, running back all have their plays there. And it's just a way of communicating. Everyone does it a little bit differently. Cornell is going to signal in a number like number one or number five. Guys can look at the, the, the play there, have it right there. And then the quarterback will give the protections or the, or the run scheme to the offensive line. Luke Hagee on the draw. He's loose at the 10 and down at the one yard line a 31 yard gain for Hagee who is now rushed for 52 yards here in the first half yeah this really shouldn't surprise the uh, Princeton offense I mean as Princeton defense because talking to the coaches before the game they all said that every single game 
Cornell's come out trying to run the football with Hagee. And then after a while, they'll just settle back in and just throw it around. So they shouldn't be surprised with this. He's a tough kid. You see that stiff arm at the oh, end? Yeah, he's a physical guy. Make you miss, too. Matthews hands to Hagee, and there are flags all over the place. Looks like a false start going against Cornell. There's reasons why you're one and five, and these are reasons why you're one and five. You can't have the ball in the one yard line and then get moved back because of a false start. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 52 of the offense, five yard penalty. It remains first down. That's Jeff Cruz, the right guard. And David Archer, the former offensive lineman that obviously royals him a little bit. First penalty against Cornell though. It will drive you crazy as a head coach. It's opportunities. And sometimes when you go back and look at the stats, you look at the film, you forget about a play like that, but that changes games because if they don't get seven here and settle for three, it's a big momentum shift. First and goal from the seven. Matthews being pursued by Baya, throws to Golatly, and Matt Ahrens drags him down at the three. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, Princeton has really brought a lot of pressure here so far early on. Also a lot of line movements up inside. You know, the, the uh, Cornell offensive line is sort of a little bit of a mixed match. You know, they've had some injuries there. Uh, they're, they're young at a couple spots in terms of game experience. And so you're going to see a lot of different things from this defense, uh, this Princeton defense. Offset eye here, Matthews to Hagee. And not much doing up the middle. And this is where you usually struggle when you're at the type of offense that Cornell is. It's these power situations, these times where, where you want to line up in two tight ends and two backs and try to knock people off the ball. Because it's really not what you do. I mean, you only have so much time in the course of the day to practice. And uh, you have to develop a mentality. And right now, Cornell is more of a spread team than a power team. They spread out here with five receivers. So far today, four for five on third down. down they have been in Matthews face today one was intercepted in the first quarter and that led to a Princeton score this one is going to lead to a field goal try yeah it all goes back to that false start on first down you know when we're looking at uh, first and two from the two as a, as a Cornell uh, offensive staff we, we have a different mindset than you know looking at first and seven and uh, you know trying to figure out what the best play call is so uh, you put yourself in a lot of pressure when, when you lose those opportunities Joe Pirick with a 21-yard try. He made a 39-yarder in the first quarter. It's low, but it's good. Pirick is two for two today and in his career. And Cornell hanging around, trailing at 15 to six. We'll step aside with 13 minutes left in the first half. Princeton trying to go to six and one on the year. Even the trees are orange here at Princeton. Tigers lead at 15 to six over Cornell in an Ivy League battle that dates back to 1891. The 96th meeting between these two schools. They've had some real barn burners lately, some very close games. Jeff Matthews and the Big Red have won the last three years, but this might be Princeton's year in general in the Ivy League. That might have rolled out of bounds. Instead, Gaffney is pinned back at his own five, and that was a bad decision. He's tackled at the 10 by several Cornell defenders, including Evan Boyd. Yeah, you know, uh, Cornell has been right there and is a, is a mistake away from making this a, a five-point ball game. Um, and, and now they need to get a stop and, and get some good field position and, and uh, see if they can get seven on the board, and all of a sudden it's a two-point ball game. It was a lengthy drive for Cornell, five and a half minutes, 72 yards, but again, only a 21-yard field goal at the end of it. Connor Michelson is in there for the first time, and he hands off to Atwater, and Atwater scampers free. A first down, a couple more, and a flag down on the play at the 25. Yeah, e even as simple things like running uh, an outside uh, a zone or, or a sweep, uh, Princeton puts a little flair to it. Where they, they put the ball in the air uh, and then fake the bubble screen out to the right. 
Looked like Joe Goss, the center, was pulling out there and holding for Princeton. During the run, holding number 63 of the offense, that penalty is declined. Holding number three of the offense, that penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Remain first down. Yeah, if, if, I'm, if I'm the wide receiver. Roman Wilson, right. number three. And then they double team him, grab the jersey. Yeah. It's funny, the guy, the, the, the players watch the NFL all the time, and that's illegal in the NFL. You can grab that breastplate because it happens all the time, and no one ever calls it in the NFL. Michelson throws to Wilson over his head out of bounds. Now, Princeton started out this year splitting time between Michelson and Quinn Epperly. Michelson got banged up in the game we had here, KC, okay. against Columbia and hasn't played since, but he's back in there for some reps today. Yeah, Qu Quinn Epperly has really taken over this team, and um, yeah, it's really tough to argue with the things that they, uh, they've they done in terms of uh, offensive production. Uh, but uh, they see Connor Mickelson is, is someone, uh, um, he, he can throw the ball a little bit better. He's a little bit more of a pocket guy, and they figured we got two pretty good quarterbacks, let's play both of them. Atwater picked up three on that shovel, third and seven. Michelson on the year, two touchdowns, two interceptions, over 600 yards passing. Sack, fumble, oh. and that is a touchdown. Cornell, Justin Harris. The big red fans making the trip down from Ithaca, and they're loving that one. And, you know, I didn't want to jinx them before this play, but I was going to remark that uh, it takes a lot of courage to put your backup quarterback who hasn't played a whole lot uh, when you're pinned back like this, especially when you have a guy like Quinn Epperly who's coming off a six-touchdown performance, and the offense is clicking so well. Um, and, again, uh, anyone can second-guess when things go, uh, go wrong, but uh, probably would have wanted to put... Uh, Connor in at a different time in, in this game and maybe a different field position. Boomer Olsen on to attempt the extra point for Cornell, and that is good. 15-13, Princeton on top after the fumble recovery and touchdown by big Justin Harris, 6'6", 275, rumbling into the end zone for the Big Red. Kevin Marsh on forced it, and Cornell right in this game. Princeton leading at 15 to 13. They have not beaten Cornell the last three years. There was a memorable game here two years ago. Cornell won in a snowstorm behind the arm of Jeff Matthews. And Bob Saray is probably thinking right now, hmm, yeah, it's a ball game again. Well, the big, the big red definitely has some momentum, and uh, there was a point early in this game where uh, it looked like Princeton could kind of knock them out and really take the wind out of their sails. But you got to give uh, the big red some credit; they've hung tough. Wells kicks it deep to Anthony Gaffney, and Gaffney wins his way forward to the 20, tackled again by Boyd. He has stood out on special teams. See who Princeton sends out on offense here. Connor Michelson was the quarterback for that last series. He got sacked, yep. fumbled the football, hasn't played in three weeks. This is a big game for your team. Yeah, yeah. Easy to second guess, but what you have to say about this Princeton offense is they're non-conventional with a lot of things, including their, their substitution at the quarterback position. Quinn Epperly is back in there. Complete to Costello. Matt Costello up to the 30. It looks like he's just shy of the first down. Brett Bueller, one of the tacklers for the Big Red. Yeah, I just think it's tough when you have a quarterback like Quinn Epperly playing that good uh, to even take him off the field for a snap. Three straight Ivy League Offensive Player of the Week honors. Dre Nelson gets the first down and two more. Justin Harris with the tackle. Harris is the guy that just picked up the fumble and rumbled in for the touchdown. Yeah, and James Perry, their offensive coordinator, was on my staff in 06, and he's a non-conventional kind of guy. Um, so uh, it doesn't surprise me that uh, he will break the mold on some things because his offense breaks the mold in terms of their tempo, in terms of uh, uh, the play volume. 
Uh, there's a lot of things they do that are non-conventional. Conventional. Off of play action, a 17-yard completion to Matt Costello. Everly gets it again. This is a get-and-go offense, and there he goes. Yep. Out of bounds at the 43, still shy of a first down, but the Tigers continue to the move the ball at will. And you see Cornell trying to get some substitutes on the field now because the ball went out of bounds, and so they have a little bit more time between snaps, but this is this warp speed that, that you'll see Princeton do at times. Atwater is the lone back, and Epperly keeps it. He is a master at that sleight of hand, a great option quarterback, and he gets down to the 30-yard line, a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, that's a great example of Cornell having a defense perfectly, but just have a mismatch at the af athlete, different athlete uh, at the defensive end spot than the quarterback spot, and that's why they made the big play. Marshawn had to come out. Logan Murphy in on the defensive line for Cornell. Epperly has time again, going for DeVell, and it's incomplete. Pass interference called against Jared Watson-Lewis. He had his back turned. Yep. Wasn't playing the ball. Now it's a good job of officiating. Uh, the, the, the side judge, um, you know, didn't have the proper Pass angle. interference on the defense, number six. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The back judge makes this call. He's a better uh, shot at this, and he uh, definitely got there before the ball. And, uh, it's a, it's a good job of officiating. Boy, that's tough for me to say. But uh, but these guys have done a good job so far today. All three quarterbacks in the game at the same time. Basta goes in motion. Michelson behind center. Hands it off to Everly, who throws. Complete to Boston. These guys are just showing off now. Princeton gets it down to the eight-yard line. Three quarterbacks at once. Now Epperly is the man behind center. And look at this formation. Michelson. That's a throwback. That's complete to Epperly. Tumbling down to the two-yard line. First down, Tigers. First and goal. I bet these guys have a lot of fun in their offensive staff. Means they probably all bring their crayons in. And they start drawing circles on the board. How about we do this? How about we do that? But you know, uh, it, it, it's it's tough to execute, and these guys do a great job of executing. Bob Zeray said, "I'm only an offensive lineman, but I hardly say no to these guys when they come up with these crazy plays. I let them do it." Epperly on the keep. No problem. Touchdown, Tigers. His second rushing touchdown of the game and his 13th of the year. Yeah, Cornell did set the edge there. Epperly gets outside. And again, he's such a great athlete. There's so many things he can do. He can get you downhill on a power game. He can run outside in the sweep, but he can throw the football too. So when you're defending Epperly, you're defending the entire field. And that's why it's really tough to get him off the field. Be alive for a two-point conversion here. Instead, they'll bring Beak over, and Roth will hold. Last time, Roth took it in for a two-pointer. That's good. 22 to 13, Princeton. Eight plays, 80 yards, three quarterbacks. No problem for the Tigers, who keep on rolling up by nine. Back on old Nassau, Princeton University. That's the library, a lot of fantastic architecture here on campus. Sometimes you forget when these teams are out there playing such a high level of football that these players have such an immense level of academic demands on them. David Archer, a former player at Cornell, knows all about it. And Bob Serace played here for Princeton when they won the Ivy League in 1989. And James Perry recognizes the intelligence level of their players, and so uh, he uh, he adds a pretty uh, varied offense. Uh, and you can see it, it takes a lot to execute this, and been very impressed with the execution all day long. Perry himself went to Brown, where he was the Ivy League's all-time passing leader, and he was eclipsed recently by Cornell's quarterback Jeff Matthews. So we're going to see 
with the ball at the 25. Here's the last three plays, very creative from Princeton. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you put Eckler in the backfield, you hand the ball off, and he throws it. Then he hands it off, and guess what? He's going to bootleg out, and they're going to have a throwback. And then this has been their favorite formation in short yardage, is they've gone empty backfield, wing set, and they let Epperly kind of pick and choose. He's going to go up inside, or is he going to go around the flank? He has a speed that if he gets the edge, he can put the ball in the end zone from the, from the flank. Epperly is 10 for 10 throwing the ball, 94 yards passing and a touchdown. He's also rushed the ball 48 yards and two touchdowns. Cornell keeping it on the ground. We've seen more balance from them today, KC. We talked about the disparity at the outset of the ball game as Luke Hagee takes it across the 30. Before that play, they had 83 yards passing, 46 rushing. Yeah, it will be, you see that right now because they're getting a lot of nickel and dime defenses. So, so there's, there's less big bodies in there. Um, and, and I think, you know, Hagee's a pretty good running back and they want to see if they can, you know, get some, some, some positive yards on first down and, and make uh, second and third a little bit more manageable. Second and three here. Princeton jumped. Ian McGeary. Prior to the snap, offside. Number 69 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. The yardage is enough for a first down. This Princeton defense under Steve Verbit has bent but not broken this year. They only have one loss. That was to Lehigh by one point. Otherwise, they'd be looking at perhaps an undefeated season this year. Complete to Bostain, the tight end. Leaning across the 45, still a little shy of the first down. It's an eight-yard pickup. Talked to David Archer earlier this week about Princeton, and he said, wow, that's a team clicking on all cylinders. They have done so here today. They hand it off on second and short. Hagee, close to a first down, and he does get it. Again, they, they have some versatility with this Cornell offense because the, the, the tight end's able to spread out wide and, and, and give those four wide receiver sets. Uh, but then he's also able to come in and, and act as a fullback and give him some two two uh, two back sets. Also with, with Hagee, you know, he's able to spread out wide, and so that's when they can go empty. So it puts a lot of pressure on on, on the Princeton defense because uh, with the same personnel groupings, they can do a lot of different things. They really move that tight end Bostain around. He's in the slot near side. Hagee next to Matthews. Another completion to Luke Hagee out to the 50. He only got a couple. He's a sophomore. Had a big game versus Brown recently. 201 all-purpose yards and a touchdown. Yeah, great job of Matthews and Hagee being on the same page. A uh, little blitz um, in, into, into uh, Matthews' face, and that was his hot read to get the ball out to, to Hagee. Hagee got his head around. And, uh, you know, at least got positive yardage. Man-to-man -man coverage near side on Chris Lenz. Matthews goes the other way to Galatly, his possession receiver. First down and a couple more. Matt Ahrens with the tackle. Yeah, when Matthews has the numbers right, he likes to get that quick screen out there. Um, and and uh, again, the offenses are very similar in that way. It's a numbers game. Where are the better numbers? Are the better numbers inside for the run? Then we're going to run the football. The numbers are better outside for the pass. We'll throw the ball outside. Boy, when Galaki gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, you know, he's uh, he's pretty good in space. Galatly, the senior from Issaquah, yeah, Washington, six here. catches, yeah. 48 yards. Yeah. 6.20 left in the first half. Galatly again, his seventh catch, and another first down for Cornell. Run out of bounds by Rohan Hilton. You have to be impressed with, uh, you know, the season hasn't gone Cornell's way, uh, but they've bounced right back in, uh, in, in this game, and, and they're showing some resilience, and this is a, a nice drive they have going here. Every NFL team has been in to see Jeff Matthews this year. Highly touted quarterback, All-America candidate. 
Casey, how good of a prospect is Matthews? Well, you know, you know he, he poses the, the, the one thing that, that every quarterback has to have in the upcoming draft. He has a strong arm. You know, uh, the NFL is all about the arm strength. 6'4", good size as well. And there's a flag very late. Lenz got tied up with Jacoby Johnson, a backup cornerback. You know, in my day job, I work with Ron Jaworski, uh, NFL films and, and we watch a lot of tape together and Greg Cosell um, and, and, and these guys are you know talk, we talk Pass a lot of quarterback play on the defense number 29 it's an automatic first down at the spot of the foul and you know there's this trend to these athletic quarterbacks and that's all fine and great but the uh, the reality is is that uh, you, you need in in the NFL game you need to be able to uh, perpetuate the ball down the field uh, matriculated down the field as they like to say uh, with with the passing game you have the guy who has a strong arm and this young man has a strong arm now you you'll be amazed all the different uh, things that will happen when the season's over until draft day in terms of all the testing he'll go through ball start number 68 of the offense five yard penalty it remains first down second time that Cornell has had a false start in the red zone and it backs him up to the 19 and again there's reasons why you know you're one and five and you know, an old expression I, I heard and, and I've kept with me is, you are what your record says it is. And um, there's a reason why uh, that, that, you know, teams are, are you know, five and one. There's teams, reasons why there's teams are one and five. Total yards have been even. Matthews trying to even up the scoreboard a little bit here, trailing 22 to 13 and another flag. And it's going against Cornell, a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, 89 on the offense, five-yard penalty, and it remains first down. That's yeah. the tight end, Bostain. Yeah, I tell you, the Princeton uh, defense rate caused that one. There was a, looks like they, they checked from one defense to another defense. There was a lot of movement going on, and uh, uh, just uh, some movement with that tight end, and you, know, you just can't have those things happen. Fourth penalty on Cornell for 30 yards, but even more, it's been the timing. Matthews hit hard, intercepted. Princeton has it out across the 30-yard line. Luke Katarius. A great job by this Princeton defense. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of playing empty. And when you have an empty backfield, that means you have five blockers. So if you bring six defenders, that means someone's going to come free. And uh, that's what uh, Princeton did. They, they brought six defenders. Someone came free and uh, got a shot on, on Matthews before he got the ball out. Joe Robin, who hardly plays, came in right there, made the big play, and then got hurt. Yeah. But that's, a, that's the kind of things that, you know, Jeff can't do. That's the kind of things that Jeff can't do. He, he, can't, he can't make those poor decisions. Uh, he has to understand, okay, it looks like they could bring uh, more than we can handle. That ball has to come out of my hand now. The other thing is this obviously was a mistake on, on the offensive line because the way it works, if they're going to bring six, you need to block the inside guys first, let the free runner come from the outside because he's going to take the longest time uh, to, uh, to get there. And he knows he made a mistake. You can see his frustration after the play. But that's on him, and that's on the offensive line to get that squared away because if they're going to bring six, we need to block the most dangerous five first, let the free runner come from the outside. It'll give us the, the best time in terms of the Cornell offense to get the ball away. Ten-yard interception return for Joe Robin, his first pick of the year. Again, a backup defensive lineman who dropped back in coverage and, and got Matthews. He didn't expect that. Epperly on the hand. DeAndre Atwater fights his way up to the 40-yard line. That's good for seven. Yeah. yeah, Princeton really likes to run those, those kind of outside zones, out, uh, sweep kind of actions, where you know, take advantage of uh, their athleticism. And they come back with a quick snap, and then they try to run the ball up inside. And they're back at their warp seat speed again, Dave, so I don't know how much time we're going to have to talk, because here they go again. Works for me. Five minutes left in the half. Epperly on play action. All kinds of time complete. Matt Costello down to the 39. Tackle by Bueller. 
Yeah, and, and a, a defense like Cornell, who doesn't have a lot of depth, you, you, you think getting to the point where they're starting to get worn out a little bit because of the tempo in which Princeton's playing. 18-yard catch. Here's Epperly again. No problem. Complete to Wilson. Down to the 31. And he got eight yards. Yeah, I tell you, Roman Wilson is... Uh, <laughs> He's just a really good football player, and actually he was part of the discussion with the pro scouts uh, before the game. Bob Saray says he's so quick in tight space, he can get separation right away. Epperly throws complete again. Connor Kelly, first down, Princeton, inside the 20. Yeah, you know, give a lot of credit to this Princeton offensive line. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of functional space there. Between um, between that offensive line and that quarterback, quarterback there's a lot of uh, room to throw the football. And you can see uh, this is a, a timeout based on the exhaustion of Cornell's defense. They had to. Their second timeout of the half. 4:18 left in the second quarter. How about Quinn Epperly? 13 out of 13 throwing the football. Yeah, he's he's a special player. Uh, I think he could play at a, a lot of different levels. Um, first of all, his athleticism. But the other thing, he has a very accurate arm, you know, and sometimes, you know, you look at the Drew Breeses of the world, you don't have to be six foot four, six foot five to play this game. And uh, he does a good, great job hanging in the pocket. He does a great job using his athleticism. I think he's the perfect style quarterback for what Princeton wants to do offensively uh, with this, uh, you know, kind of, I don't want to say gadget offense, but uh, this uh, you know, multifaceted offense that uh, can, you know, do a lot of different things from, uh, you know, run the ball up inside to get the ball on the flank, to throwing it deep, to throwing it short, to all the screen games, reverses. It's, uh, it's a mixed bag. Now 14 for 14 after the last completion. Atwater dives up the middle to the 17-yard line. Got about three. DeAndre Atwater, the sophomore, has played the lion's share, or at least the tiger's share of the minutes here with Brian Mills, the senior injured. And you see the quarterbacks come back in the game. Who's got it here? Bostic fumbled it. Was he down? Cornell is on the football. They're saying Cornell has it at their own two yard line. And a flag is down. Princeton had all three quarterbacks on the field. And Dave, even more important than that, they had all three quarterbacks under center, under center and guards, not knowing you know, which quarterback was really the quarterback just from the linebacker's perspective and the secondary's perspective. So that's the first time I've seen three different quarterbacks up under a player uh, when the ball was snapped. But uh, I think if we stay here a little bit longer, we're going to see even more from uh, this offense of, uh, of Princeton. After the recovery by Cornell, dead ball foul, number 99, on Cornell, half the distance to the goal will be Cornell's ball, first and 10. So they'll march Cornell all the way back to about the two yard line, but they get the football. It looked like Bostic may have been down. There right. is no replay at this level in the Ivy League. And there he you, is. And you see it's a little bit of a, a fumble Ruski-ish type of play where a uh, little deception going on. He was definitely down. Yep. But it's not reviewable here at this level. So Princeton robbed on that one. And, and you know, the two turnovers have both come from the backup quarterbacks. So uh, a second guesser wants to say, you know, why don't you just leave Quinn Epperly in there and have him do it all? But again, you can see all the things these guys like to do and the versatility of it, and it's who they are. Cornell just trying to get the ball away from their own end zone. Luke Hagee, maybe a yard. And don't be surprised if you see a shot downfield here. This is the perfect time to take a shot uh, downfield. Max protect, keep them all in the block, send out two receivers. Rohan Hilton tackles Hagee after a gain of maybe one more. Because a, a lot of coaches have philosophies that when we're this backed up, if we don't get a first down, we're be gonna we're gonna be giving Princeton points anyway because. You know, they're going to be a great position for field goal range, uh, at least. Um, so why don't we take a shot downfield? Third and long.
I would expect some pressure from Princeton. They've been doing it all day long. Matthews with time. He's going for Lenz. Good defense by John Hill. Reaching in at the last moment to save maybe a touchdown. Yeah, it really was, boy. They got behind Hill, and uh, he did a good job catching up and playing the ball. Um, and, but in, in, with a lot of surprise on my part, Princeton only brought four. And so they uh, had enough time to take that shot downfield. And it was a really well-thrown ball. Um, but Hill does a great job getting that hand in there. Sixth pass breakup of the year for John Hill, the sophomore from Warren, Michigan. And a very difficult punting situation for Chris Frazier, one of the best in the Ivy League, but his heels near the back of the end zone. Just gets it out of there. Max Lescano lets it go out of bounds near the 40. Great field position for Princeton and plenty of time and all three timeouts. Yeah, usually time is not a problem with this Princeton offense in terms of how much time's on the clock. Uh, they play at such a high rate of speed that they usually don't need a whole lot of, of time. But, but you know, it's something that one of the reasons I like the no huddle, I like the up-tempo, is that when you do get caught in these situations that you might have to, you know, play a little fast because of the, the clock situation, it never phases you because you're used to playing that way all game long. So two-minute drills are what... Uh, uh, Princeton does, and uh, they have great field position here on this one. I would guess that the junking it up two and three quarterback thing has got to be over for Princeton. It it helped them get here to five and one on the year, but it hasn't helped them today. Right. The and offense, they have five yard penalty. It remains first down. There's an example. They had a, a sixth offensive lineman on the field, and he ran out late. Um, and those, are, you know, again. We've talked about this a hundred times, but you can't make those kind of mistakes when you when you have the ball in good field position. And just to finish the point, you have to put the ball in Everly's hands. He is the dominant offensive player in the Ivy League right now, a player of the year candidate. Everly complete again. Des Smith, the tight end, out of bounds at the 33. 17 straight completions dating back to last game. That sets a school record. Yeah, I don't know if, if there's a a player in the country that's as valuable as Epperly is to to uh, to their uh, their team with their offense. Epperly shovels it to Atwater, and DeAndre Atwater down to the 26-yard line. Some extracurriculars after the fact, and a flag is down. It looked like they nabbed Spencer Houston for throwing a punch at a Cornell player. And there's a simple play, a little pump fake out to the left and just a little bubble After screen. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 76 for the offense, 15-yard penalty. It remains third down. That is Houston. Yeah, and Bobby Sarace is, is not going to be happy with that. But as I was saying earlier, just a little fake out there wide, either to a, a smoke route or a bubble screen. And then the, the running back just comes underneath and just a little shuffle pass up inside. Very safe because if, if the ball is dropped, it's con considered an incomplete pass. Inside two minutes left in the second quarter. Princeton leading 22 to 13 with the ball. Four receivers for Epperly. Guns it again, complete to Connor Kelly. 18 straight completions. Now. Fourth down here. <laughs> On fourth and five. Everly complete again. Flag is down. Costello with the first down catch. Everly has been perfect, literally. Eighteen straight completions, a new school record, and he just extended it again. Pass interference. On the defense, number four. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Jaguars. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a special performance we're, we're seeing here. These are not easy balls he's throwing. These aren't uh, to, to all wide open uh, receivers. I mean, that uh, that ball had to be put right in the right spot, let the receiver put it on his outside shoulder. Uh, he, it's been really impressive uh, all day long. I don't know how you take this guy off the field. Epperly, again. Complete to Seth DeValve at the 10-yard line. Good for nine yards. 
See how they spot it here. It might be good enough for a first. 120 left in the half. It is first and goal. And this is the formation they like to, to run Epperly from. Epperly just out of bounds at the one and a half yard line. A little surprise Cornell hasn't done a better job defending this play because uh, you know every time uh, Princeton has come out in this you know empty set with the with the wing tight end and uh, they, they've run the ball with uh, with Epperly. This is a uh, been something they've, they've seen all game long and, and they haven't done a good job defending it. 20 for 20 dating back to the last game against Harvard. Epperly toward the goal line and in for the touchdown. The junior has been absolutely fantastic. That is his third touchdown run of the game. He also has a TD pass and Princeton takes a 28 to 13 lead. Touchdown! Extra point is good. 29-13 Tigers. You were right, KC, they didn't need much time. 31 yards over a minute 23. Yeah, and they had a couple penalties in there too. They were gotten this thing done a little bit quicker. But I think Bobby Sarace is going to kind of walk over to his very creative and talented offensive coordinator, James Perry, and say, you know what, James? Let's just keep Quinn in there till we get this thing salted away. But, uh, you know, Quinn Epperly, as I said earlier, might be playing as, as well as any football player in the country at any level. Uh, and this performance is just another great example of it. He's coming off of uh, a six touchdown performance uh, last weekend. And uh, here he's uh, you know, setting a mark for uh, most complete passes in a row at uh, a school that's played football for a pretty long time. I would say so. They played in the first game ever back in 1869. Some people forget that, yes, they lost the first game to Rutgers. But later that year in the home and home, they beat Rutgers and finished up the year one and one. I guess tied for a national championship, huh? Yeah. Well, they've won 28 of them. A lot of great football history here in the ancient eight. But I don't know if they've ever seen anything like this. Princeton trying to go 4-0 in the Ivy League for the first time since 1995. Luis Uceta. Not much there. Trevor Osborne, one of the tacklers for Princeton. Great coverage by Princeton that time. And now there's 53 seconds left, and we'll see what uh, Cornell can get going here. And it'll be interesting to see what defensive coordinator Steve Verbert does if he plays uh, soft and keeps everything in front of him or if uh, they, they go some man and try to, to, to blitz uh, Matthews. There are about a dozen NFL scouts here today to see Jeff Matthews, the Cornell quarterback, but their eyes have to have been opened by the performance that Quinn Epperly and Princeton are putting on this afternoon. Matthews complete. And Galatly gets it out to the 20, picks up about four. Remember, you know, they have 48 seconds left, but uh, they only have one timeout. So, you know, a lot of the strategy has to be uh, getting the ball out of bounds. Uh, and also on those first downs, we need to have a play ready to go so we can call it quickly uh, and, and, and not chew too much clock up. Matthews flushed. Throws incomplete, coverage by John Hill again. Yeah, Matthews did a good job getting out of uh, out of pressure. Um, and, and he got his eyes downfield, and he's trying to direct his wide receiver, you know, to, hey, take take off. You know, the uh, the Princeton defender was was looking in the backfield, and sometimes when those things happen, you have a chance to make a big play. And they just couldn't get on the same page. And, uh, you know, Matthews did a good job throwing the ball away because the last thing they can do is take a sack right now. Cornell, four for seven on third down. Yeah. 
Matthews is chased. He's diving toward the first down marker. Chased out of bounds by Ty Desiree. Huge first down for Cornell because they were going to give this ball back to Princeton with 32 seconds left. And you'd say, 32 seconds? Yeah, with three timeouts in this tempo of offense, that's a lot of time for that Princeton offense. Matthews with four receivers and Hagee. <laughs> Throws incomplete. Intended for Lenz. Coverage by Phil Baia, the safety. Yeah, you know, Steve Verbert did a good job having patience, but but his nature is to blitz you. And uh, he, he's, he's bringing more than they can handle. So you're getting a lot of zero coverage. Uh, and that's when you have a chance to make some big plays. And uh, Cornell has not capitalized on that uh, enough today. Ty Desiree stays in there at right defensive end. Complete to Hagee. Out of bounds after an eight-yard pickup. It, Cornell had a good plan there where, again, they saw that... Uh, you know, Princeton was going to bring more than they could handle. And Matthews does a good job just kind of rolling to his right a little bit, getting the ball out to a little flat route. Um, what they need now, they need to pick up a, a, some chunk of yardage so they have a chance to get a field goal going into uh, going to halftime. Third and two, 24 seconds left. <laughs> Matthews, pressure. And it's nearly intercepted. Matt Ahrens, the safety, with a diving attempt. He just had to unload it. Yeah. The Princeton defense is very well coached. I've known Steve Verber a long time. He coached me at Delaware. And, and their, their secondary understands, when we're going to bring more than they can block, um, that, then you know we, we need to have airtight coverage. Don't, don't give them anything underneath because the ball's going to come out of their hand very quickly. Uh, and that's what's happened. Uh, uh, when they've been in those situations where they've maxed the uh, uh, blitzed them. Uh, Matthews has had to get the ball of his hand quickly, and Princeton's done a great job uh, with some great, uh, great coverage. Chris Frazier, the freshman punter, gets away a good one. Punt. Here's the punt. Let's kind of yeah, let's it roll. Let's take it step. Oh, nice. Didn't want to mess with potentially fumbling the football in his own end, so it rolls all the way down to the two-yard line, where Princeton will just kneel on it and go into the locker room with a 29 to 13 lead. And Dave, you say that with a lot of confidence. I know James Perry. Right now his mind's going, eight seconds, I got three timeouts. Okay, <laughs> then Bob Serace walks over and says, no, we're gonna take a knee here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not at your own two. <laughs> uh, James, James is probably biting his lip because he does have eight whole seconds and you know they only have 98 yards to go, so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they've ever practiced this formation. This is going to be a new one for them. Well, you can't just kneel on it because it would be a safety where Epperly is standing. He gets it up to the two-yard line again. Incidentally, that was a long punt by Chris Frazier, 69 yards. And that is, in fact, the end of the first half. Quinn Epperly, 58 yards rushing, four touchdowns, three of them on the ground, one through the air. Video game-like stats for Epperly and the Tigers. This is a team that's number one in the Ivy League in yards and points, and they are showing it here this afternoon for Bob Serace. 29 to 13, Princeton on top, trying to go 4-0 in the Ivy League. And we will be back with some halftime highlights and stats in a little while. This is college football on ESPN3. Absolutely, uh, on both sides. Princeton scored early, catch by Roman Wilson from seven yards out. Quinn Everly was on fire. Not only did he have that TD pass, but he had three touchdown runs and, and, in the first half. 18 consecutive completions. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> A new school record, that was his second touchdown. 
And Everly with his third, giving him 14 rushing TDs on the year, five shy of the school record held by Keith Elias. And Cordell hanging around in this ball game. The defense helped keep them in it. Yeah, uh, great job getting around the edge, strip, and, uh, and pick it up for the touchdown. Justin Harris, his first TD of the year. There are the stats. Princeton starting to pull away now in total yards. First down's pretty even. Turnovers have been costly on both sides, but Cornell missed out on a couple opportunities in the red zone, some penalties, some turnovers. Yeah, and when you, when you look at games, it's third down conversions and turnovers and executing in the red zone, and that's where Cornell has to you know, be scratching their head a little bit. They had some opportunities in that, uh, that red zone. They didn't get it done. Anthony Gaffney for Princeton. And he gets up to the 28-yard line. Good return for Gaffney, an all-Ivy League player last year. Quinn Epperly, the aforementioned quarterback for the Tigers, is now 18 for 18 in this game, 20 for 20, dating back to the double overtime win against Harvard last week. A new school record. He is three away from the single-game FCS record for consecutive completions. Fires complete. Some stick him on the hands of Roman Wilson. I don't know how he got back and made that catch. It's, it's like when uh, the pitcher's trying to get a no-hitter or a perfect game and all the guys are stepping up their level uh, to see if they can get a record here. 19 in a row. Epperly on the hand to Atwater. DeAndre Atwater carrying tacklers across the 45 to the 47-yard line. That's a first down. He was stopped by Justin Harris. They do, they do a great job with their sweeps. Uh, they capture the edge and they get those guards around the, 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 the corner. And uh, it's a little unique how they kind of toss it in front. Um, he is now 21 for 21, including the pitch to Atwater and that completion to DeValve. So that ties the record. And the inside hand. And it's Dre Nelson who picks up a few for the Tigers who are really moving the ball with alacrity. Yeah. Dre Nelson. And they have the warp speed even cranked to a new level where they're not even changing formations. Uh, they're just, and, and as you can see, the play is set in as the play is ending and guys are, are getting in position. The ball's being snapped in record time. On second down, the hand again to Nelson. He's a jitterbug. Tackled at the 30-yard line by Tuan Terrell, a backup safety. First down for the Tigers. And this is where Cornell has to take advantage of the fact that Princeton just substituted. So at that point, you send in the substitute slowly, and you make everything slow down, because that's the, the one thing that uh, the NCAA has done in terms of substitution rules. There's his 21st straight completion. Roman Wilson with the catch. Out of bounds of the 21-yard line. He's now 22 for 22. The most completions in a row to start a game. Austin Moorman from Missouri State did it back in 2000. Another completion. Connor Kelly. That's 23 straight. Kyle Slager from Brown also had the record of 20 straight to start a game. That was back in 02. So a historic day for Quinn Epperly and Princeton. It's a new FCS record of 23 straight completions to start a game. And the single game overall record is 28. Epperly on the fake. Complete again. DeVal toward the pylon. And he is in! Touchdown! Seth DeVal with his third TD of the year. Hey Dave, it's been great being a spectator during this whole thing because you really have no time to comment. Uh, but uh, you know, these guys play at an amazing speed and the, the precision and the execution is just uh, at a different level than uh, what I've seen anywhere across the country this year. 
12-yard TD catch by DeValve, and the extra point for Nolan Beek. Princeton has been so impressive. Again, 36 to 13 Tigers. And this is a Princeton team that has lost three years in a row to Cornell. They were a 500 team last year. They won one ball game the year before that. And now this is a team that is one point away against Lehigh from being undefeated, not only today, but maybe for the season. Yeah, and I talked to Bobby Ruiz on the field today, and he said that uh, it's been recruiting. You know, we've gotten some uh, outstanding football players in here. They've bought into the system. And uh, what a great job, but what a great effort getting in the end zone. Um, but this is, this is a, a very athletic team. Uh, and uh, if you look at the skill kids, I think their skill kids are the best in this Ivy League. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure watching the execution. You love to watch good football. When you watch this Princeton offense, it is really good football. A very quick nine play drive, 72 yards in 229 for Epperly and Princeton. This has been fun to watch if you're wearing orange and black. Luis Uceta, good return, 25-30, 35 out of bounds, flags everywhere. This Princeton team is on their way to setting a school record for scoring. During the return, holding on the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. All right, let's put this in perspective, Casey. Along with Rutgers, Princeton was the first college football team ever, okay, going back to 1869. This is about to be their all time scoringest team. And you can see why. Um, you, you have a, a pretty pretty talented and, and, and experienced offensive line. You have the best skilled kids in the Ivy League and, and a scheme that puts their kids in, in position to be successful. You know, get the ball to their athletes in space. And when they get the ball to the athletes in space, I mean, they're, they're special. They really are. Galatly in motion. Matthews. Pump fake. Going big. Incomplete. Coverage by Anthony Gaffney. They are trying for Lucas Shapiro, who's a heck of a receiver. We watched him on film earlier this week, KC, and this is a guy that's big. They go down the field to him, but he's been quiet today. Well, you know, he's a little bit of a mismatch size-wise with uh, all the corners in the league. Uh, but, you know, we did a game earlier with Princeton, and, uh, and we know, you know, talking to their defensive staff, they really do like the, the talent and the athleticism they have in the secondary. And actually, it's probably the strength of this team. Three breakups today for Anthony Gaffney. Here's the hand to Luke Hagee. He gets about five out to the 20-yard line. Hagee's having a big game. And you can see that, you know, Cornell is in no huddle, and, and they'll do some up-tempo, but the tempo in which, I can't emphasize this enough. I've seen a lot of games this year. I used to coach this system. Uh, th this is a very, very high tempo. And then you add the volume of plays, oh, it's really difficult to defend. <laughs> a lot of fatigue and lack Hello, of substitution yes, for the Cornell defense. There's Matthews one. is sacked again. Princeton has been all over him. Matt Landry. Now two and a half sacks on the year for the senior from Pittsburgh, New York. Landry, a guy that played 90 of the 92 <laughs> defensive snaps <laughs> last week at Harvard. Yeah, edge pressure, and that's something that uh, the, the Princeton staff had said that uh, if you let Matthews, you know, get comfortable in the pocket, he'll just pick you apart all day long, and they've made a concerted effort to uh, blitz as often as they can and uh, play some man coverage behind. Let's count out deep for Princeton. Frazier from his own two. The average is nearly 44 yards a punt, and that was a good one. Les Cano. A short return. Up to the Princeton 37. 10.46 left of the third quarter. Princeton pouring it on. They lead it 36 to 13 over Cornell here in Ivy League action. Back with more after this on ESPN3. Back with you at Princeton. Tigers have been dominating. It's 36 to 13. 
Princeton trying to go to 6-1 and one on the year, 4-0 and oh in the Ivy League. That would be their best start in league in 18 years. Next week is such a big one for the Tigers. They will play at Penn, who they are tied with in the Ivy League right now. DeAndre Atwater for a yard for the Tigers. The big story has been Quinn Epperly, 24 out of 24, a new FCS record to start a game. 229 yards passing. You see the TDs and interceptions. He also has three rushing touchdowns yeah. on the game. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a mistake on your screen. That was 24 for 24. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 25 for 25. Des Smith, the tight end with the catch, his second reception. Out of bounds in Cornell territory at the 46. An 18-yard pickup. Here's DeAndre Atwater, who's been fantastic. Started the year as the backup tailback. Took over due to the injury to Brian Mills, and Atwater has been pouring it on on the ground. It is second and short. Yeah. Uh, here, here's a young man. You, the, everyone came to see uh, Matthews play, and everyone's walking away saying, wow, Epperly was the best, uh, not only quarterback in, in the, the building, but the best player in the building. And a lot of people will ask, you know, can, he, can his skill level translate to the next level? You'd have to say yes with this performance. Roman Wilson. Yeah, there's a, the, the problem is there's a huge difference between college football and pro football, and, and his size hurts him a little bit. Uh, his arm strength is solid, but not over the top. Uh, and he's just a good athlete, not a great athlete. Epperly toward the end zone. Touchdown, Roman Wilson. 27 straight completions for Quinn Epperly. Roman Wilson with his second touchdown catch of the game. Yeah, and these receivers have uh, brought their game to a new level also because there's been about two or three catches during the course of the second half that have really put Epperly over the top with getting to this record. Um, and again, everyone's play has been elevated. And that happens when you have a great player playing well, everyone's play elevates around it. Wilson just got his foot in there. Beak with the extra point. Wilson with his 11th touchdown of the year. A 17-yard catch. Princeton by 30. A quick drive by Blaze. 62 yards, and Epperly is still perfect. 27 for 27. He is one away from the national record. Stay tuned. The Princeton cheerleaders are going to be muscle-bound after this year. All the scoring that the Tigers are doing, 43 points today. They average 44 points per game on the season and average 534 yards per game, and it's becoming a chore. Yeah, well, they're getting their T-shirts made up, bodies, body by James Perry, <laughs> because uh, James Perry is, is the offensive coordinator and, and putting up a, a lot of points uh, these days, and uh, the cheerleaders are paying the price in a good way. A short kickoff from Nolan Beek out at the 22. Seven-yard return for the Big Red. And Bobby Serrace is managing the game a little bit now. Let's not give them any opportunities for big returns. There's a little soft spot right there in, in the kick return area. Let's put it there, get some height on it. Let's go cover. Uh, we'll give them the ball on the 30-yard line, but uh, that's what Bobby's doing now. He's starting to manage the game. That's what head coaches do. They manage the game. Nick Bland with the last return. Five receivers here for Jeff Matthews. Talk so much about Matthews early on, but he has been stymied by the Princeton defense. He's been throwing under pressure. This time he throws underneath to Luke Hagee. Got 10 yards, close to a first down. And the pro scouts coming to watch Matthews play and coming into practice and watching his videotape. This is only the initial part of the, the screening process. So uh, you'll, you'll, once the season's over, it's gonna get a lot more in depth. No Cornell quarterback has ever beaten an opponent four times. And Matthews will not be the first today. Ty Bostain with the catch. He dropped it, but he was down, it seems. 
Oh, they'll say incomplete. Right, incomplete, yeah. Wow, looked like he had the ball. <laughs> and, uh, you know. He's got it there. No, uh, yeah, and, and, the, and the one problem that keeps on raising his ugly head is the fact that uh, when, when Cornell's gone empty, um, there's just too much inside pressure getting through, and, and you got to let the outside guys come. You know, they're coming from the longest distance. Don't let a free runner come inside in that A-gap, that spot between the center and the guard, because they get to the quarterback too quickly. Matthew's in trouble again. And he is sacked. All kinds of pressure that time. Luke Merrill, one of the defenders, dropping Matthews behind the line. Yeah, you have to give uh, Steve Verbit, Jimmy Salgado, and the rest of the Princeton defensive staff a lot of credit. Uh, they put together a really nice game plan. We're a little nervous about all the man defense they were going to run if, if, if Cornell got those crossing routes on, on them. But uh, they've gotten too much pressure on uh, Matthews, and uh, those crossing routes have not been a factor. First sack of the year for Merrill, the junior from Canton, Ohio. Good football town. Bostain. The tight end with the reception. Matt Ahrens wrestles him down at the 45. Got about seven yards, still shy of the first. And on fourth down, Matthews is calling for, uh, for his head coach to go for it. And coach decides that uh, it's not the best way to go, and I agree with him. Punt the ball, go play some more football. Let's not let this thing get really ugly. See if we can get a touchdown, get some, get back in this thing. There's still time left to go in the game. Can't play Matthews. 22 minutes left in the game. If you want to have any chance, you need to score there. Lescano with a fair catch. <laughs> Quinn Epperly has been fantastic today. He has completed 27 straight passes. Matt Costello is having a big day. Bostic, Costello again. Yeah, he's the equal opportunity distributor. And, and these have not all been wide open uh, passes and, and he's, he's made plays on the run. Uh, it's been just a really impressive performance. Thrown darts. Yeah. That was the touchdown, the acrobatic play by Seth DeValve. Eight different receivers have catches today for Princeton. And there's a flip. And DeAndre Atwater is out across the 15, and that is 28 for 28, tying the national record set by Richie Williams of Appalachian State back in October of 2004. And Epperly has broken the record. Set the valve with the catch. Quinn Epperly has started this game for Princeton with 29 straight completions. Unbelievable. Thirty-one straight if you go back to last game against Harvard. Yeah, guys, you know, that's difficult to do on air with no one around. And, and here you have a, a Cornell defense that's, uh, you know, trying to get some pressure on him. And uh, he's just executed at such an amazing rate. Injury timeout for the Tigers. As their ball carrier, DeAndre Atwater, slow to get up, and that is not what they need. He is the primary ball carrier for this team right now. Yeah, with Mills out. Uh, but, you know, one of the things we talked about earlier is that uh, this Princeton team does have depth, especially at the skill positions. Uh, but, you know, to get, to get back to Quinn Epperly and, and uh, you know, his opportunity to play in the NFL, it's just a different game. But at the same time, you know, unlike... 20 years ago where scouts wouldn't get to a place like Princeton. Uh, scouts are all over the country. So he will get completely evaluated. Look at a guy like Matt Barkley. They said coming out he was going to be one of the top 10 picks. That was until they did the thorough investigation. And after they did the thorough investigation the next year, they realized he was a fourth round pick. So there's a point where scouts will really drill down and, and they'll really look at Matthews and Epperly and all the other quarterbacks and really get a you know, a definitive in terms of where they their stock lies in terms of being an NFL quarterback. Six-yard gain for Trey Nelson, who's playing for the injured Atwater. Got the first down. Now he gets one or two more. Marshawn Harris, the defensive line for 
Cornell collapsing on him. Brett Bueller also in on the tackle. The seniors had a big day for the Big Red. Over 200 career tackles now for Bueller. See Coach Perry, James Perry, directing from the sideline what the next play is going to be. So they'll go speed, 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 and then they'll do some dummy calls and look to the sideline every now and then. Trips for Epperly, and finally an incompletion intended for Seth Deval. 29 for 29 to start the game. A new FCS single game national record for Quinn Epperly. Yeah. And Bueller is down and he needs some help. Yeah, I don't know that's a record that anyone breaks anytime soon. I mean, as we talked about earlier, that's tough to do in practice on air. But um, what an impressive performance by this entire uh, Princeton offense and defense. Um, you know, this was a game that, uh, you know, they talked about. This is a game they realized last year, you know, they let the, it, that conference championship slip away up, uh, up in Ithaca, New York, and uh, they weren't going to let it happen this year. Bueller is up. Something we haven't seen all day. An incompletion for Quinn Epperly. And the, and the ball was right on the money. It just was a, a very good defensive play, and uh, that happens sometimes that the defense actually makes a play. No reaction, no problem. Just moves on to the next play. I think in his mindset, let's do another 28 in a row. He probably had no idea. And you know, with 514 left, he might get another 28 passes in. With, with, with the warp speed in terms of they play and the fact that uh, Cornell's going to continue to throw the football around. So if you're watching at home, um, you might want to go get some snacks. If you're going to watch this thing to the very end, because <laughs> the way these guys play offense, it can be a long day. Casey, we've seen a lot of FCS teams this year. Princeton needs to be ranked very tough. They, they, they really do. Uh, that was an impressive uh, game they had against Lehigh up until the fourth quarter. In that second half, they just let that game get away from them. And sometimes it's, it's you know, just not knowing that you can beat uh, a team like, like Lehigh. Uh, but now I think that with all the confidence they're playing with, I think uh, they can line up and play um, any of those Patriot League teams and some of those CAA teams, and uh, it would be a heck of a football game. How good has the Princeton offense been? 441 left in the third. This is their first punt of the game. Tyler Roth, and it's blown dead. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 34 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it will remain fourth down. Yeah, well, these guys just don't get a lot of work, so how can you be upset with a, with a false start? It's like these guys have been sitting on the sideline the entire game waiting to get in, and, uh, hey, Mom, Dad, come to the game. I'm on punt, punt protection. Well... You know, with this offense, you never could tell if you could get a chance to play or not. Cornell coming after it. Roth barely got it away. Hagee, fair catch at his own 17. It'll be a long field for Jeff Matthews and Cornell. 422 left in the third. It's been all Princeton in the second half. 43 to 13, the Tigers on top. Same old song for Princeton. They continue to steamroll. 43-13, the lead over Cornell. 420 left in the third. Dave Pompkin, Casey Keeler with you. Jeff Matthews and the Big Red back at it offensively. And that's a first down completion for Cornell out to Luke Hagee takes it down to the 35 yard line a 16 yard game I think you'll see this um, Cornell offense completely retooled next year you know this was the short short term of who they wanted to be because you know they have a, a standing quarterback in Jeff Matthews um, but who they want to be long term is probably a little bit more like Princeton in terms of an athletic quarterback some belly read um, you know, play some tempo games, those kind of things. And generally run the football more. That was the impression we got talking to the coaches this week. Ty Bostain, the tight end, with a 10-yard catch for Matthews, who's picked up the pace here. We talked a lot about Matthews early in the telecast today. An NFL prospect, there are about a, a dozen 
scouts here, but Princeton is the team that's really excelled. 28 unanswered points. Quinn Epperly with a couple of TD passes. And overall, he has three TD rushes. But it's kind of hard to judge in a game like this when they're playing with unequal teams, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious that, uh, you know, Princeton has been through a, a three or four year, uh, you know, makeover. Um, and, and they've done a great job recruiting, and, and these kids understand the system. They've all bought in. And, you know, Cornell's just, you know, the opposite. First year head coach uh, who really hasn't put his stamp on the offense yet just because of what he inherited. And eventually, you know, with the recruiting they're going to do and what they're going to do offensively, they'll be a different team in a couple of years. Ben Rogers in motion. Catch, Galatly. Short game for Grant. Bobbled it, they're saying incomplete now. Second official came in from the backside. And uh, talking to the people up at Cornell, I mean, they're so thrilled with what the future is for David Archer. But at the same time, you know, all first year coaches, you know, go through a process where they, they learn. Uh, at the F end of every season, I would evaluate myself and say, okay, what things do I need to do better? And um, you know, that says uh, a coach that was a uh, head coach for 20 years. So uh, I'm sure he's going to evaluate himself and, and look at some things critically he needs to do better, and every year he will get better. Third and nine. Matthews lobs to Shapiro. Complete first down. One of the biggest plays of the game for Cornell, down to the Princeton 27. Yeah, they got uh, a blitz inside. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. Uh, the receiver does a great job of beating the press coverage. A nice touch in the ball. Has a real finesse ball and a lot of poise by Jeff to get the ball up the sideline. 28-yard reception for the junior, Lucas Shapiro. Yeah, they actually How you doing, right? Hey. How are you? Matthews again. This time it's incomplete, intended for Rogers. Matt Aaron's on the coverage. Matthews. Has done so much as the quarterback at Cornell. 44 school records, 17 Ivy League records. He's on the Walter Payton Award watch list for the top player in FCS this year. Batted down by Jason Ray. Incomplete. Yeah, Princeton has been relentless with their pressure, and they've done a great job getting their hands up in the passing lanes. And, and you can see, you know, Jeff Matthews is a little frustrated here. What Princeton has done, too, is they've done a great job of you know, sometimes faking that blitz and dropping off some of the inside defenders and bringing pressure on the outside, off the outside and getting in that passing lane. You know, Steve Verber, as I said earlier, is an outstanding football coach and really has done a nice job putting a scheme together to uh, really slow down this Cornell passing attack. Matthews throws complete. First down at the 15. Grant Galatly having himself a ball game again against the Tigers. He had 212 yards receiving last year in the win. And he continues to pile up the stats. Recently had 13 catches against Colgate. The yeah, person has really liked this uh, this uh, inside pressure, this X, X blitzing uh, with the linebackers. But when you do that, you do open up the middle. And uh, I think uh, when they Cornell goes back and looks at his tape, they'll, they'll feel they had some opportunities in the middle of the field. They just didn't execute well enough. But at that time, they did. And here they go back to the same thing where they get that um, you know X blitz inside. Uh, and it really opens up the middle of the field. And a you know, quick one out of his hands. And... Uh, to reception. Whistled it in there to Ben Rogers. Complete down at the 11-yard line. Flags are also down. Ineligible downfield. The line of the offense was covered up. Five-yard penalty. Bill Broadhurst has been busy today. Yeah, that looks like it's on the tight end. Looks like he was covered up. And uh, if he's covered up, then uh, that means he can't go downfield. And... Um, that's where the uh, the penalty came from. And Cornell shot themselves in the foot too many times in the red zone. You know, this could be a, a little bit better football game in terms of the score if Cornell would have executed in the, in the red zone and, and gotten uh, some touchdowns down here. 
Matthews takes off and gains a couple. His only real option. Garrett Light with the stop for Princeton. Yeah, and as I said earlier, this is going to be a whole process that uh, Matthews is going to go through. You know, Mark, Matt Barkley as a junior, people were talking about him being a top 10 pick. But then he said early in December that he's not going to you know, go in the NFL. He's going to come back. And so when they drilled down the next year and Roy really took all the you know, size, speed, arm strength, all those things together, he ended up being a fourth-round draft choice. So right now it's impossible to figure out where Jeff Matthews will end up um, in terms of uh, his NFL stock. Galatly. Not much there. Mike Zuli runs him out of bounds, shy of the 20-yard line. The big story in this game, Quinn Epperly, the quarterback for Princeton, completed his first 29 passes in the ball game, setting a new national FCS single game record. And he's led this team to 43 points through three quarters of play. And that is the end of the third. Princeton looking to hold on to first place in the Ivy League and go 4-0 in league play behind number four, Quinn Epperly. We are back with the fourth quarter of play after this at Princeton. Princeton with two touchdowns every quarter. They lead it 43-13. Quinn Epperly having a monster game. It's Cornell football as we start the fourth quarter. The Big Red down by 30. Matthews throwing. Cut. Touchdown. Knocked out at the last minute by Ahrens, but it is called a touchdown on the field. Grant Galatly, a 20-yard catch, his 11th reception of the game. Yeah, they got him a cover zero, and uh, you know, got that seam route up there, a very, very well-placed ball, and you know, Galaki went up and, and, and got it. Um, and and you, know, you live by the sword and you die by the sword, and when you want to go cover zero, uh, if you have enough time to get the ball off, you have some opportunities, and uh, that time, uh, Cornell finally took advantage of it. Well thrown ball by Matthews. Boomer Olsen to attempt the extra point. It's good. 20 yard catch by Galatly. Caps an 11 play, 82 yard drive. Yeah, you can see all the pressure coming up inside. And, you know, Matthews a little off balance, but does a great job getting the ball off. And if, uh, if you're going to bring more than they can block, then you need to be prepared that uh, there could be some big plays downfield. Um, and for the most part, Princeton has, uh, you know, gotten the better of that. Uh, they've, they've moved uh, Matthews off his spot and uh, uh, made him throw some off-balance passes. They've hit him, have gotten some sacks, but uh, that was one they gave up, and uh, it's not surprising, you know, with, with the young man as talented as Matthews that eventually he'll, uh, he'll get one of those. Even though the team, Princeton, up by 23 points here, early fourth quarter, I doubt Bob Sarais is going to call off the dogs. You see Galatley's day, 11 catches, 98 yards, still too early. They, they lost three straight to these guys, and last year this set the whole tempo or tone in terms of the future of the season. Um, I remember being up 40 to nothing in a national championship game, and I lost five national championships early in my career, and it was like it was 0-0. Zero, zero. We were down by seven. And, and, and I remember the announcers commenting about how I should eventually smile. I think Mike Golick actually did that game. I wonder if Coach Kill was ever going to smile. <laughs> and and uh, I know exactly what uh, Bob Strace is going through on that sideline. And that's the kind of stuff right there wow. that drives you crazy. At the one-foot line, Gaffney fumbles it out of bounds. First down Princeton, but... Well, they're actually going to put this on the 20. Oh, wow. Because he never had control of it, even though he touched the ball in the field of play, because he never had control of it, they're going to spot the ball on the 20-yard line. If he never had control, that is the right call. Looked like he may have had the ball. We'll take another look. Again, no replay at this level. Nope. Never had it, and the pylon is out of bounds. Set the valve. 
nice play out of bounds at the 35, and that is a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, and because Princeton doesn't hand that ball off, they shuffle it in the air. It counts as a completed pass. So um, the type of offense that Princeton runs definitely has helped Quinn Epperly's numbers. But at the same time, what he did was absolutely amazing. It's just as easy to fumble that little shuffle pass, too. And there's pressure from the defensive line. Costello in motion. Epperly now 30 for 31 on the game. Will Powers in there carrying it for the first time. And he picks up a yard, maybe. Uh, and, and now what I'm doing as a head coach, I'm talking to my coordinator about, listen, I don't really want Quinn Epperly running the football a whole lot. I would like to get the run game going to see if we can choose some clock. These bubble screens are fine. They're extensions of the run game. Uh, it's just like throwing a, it's just like running a toss play. But um, you know, let's not let uh, this young man get hit. We have a big golf ball game next week. Uh, we have a, a big lead and, and we're in the fourth quarter. And I know, I know this, I want to take uh, Quinn Epperly with me when I'm, uh, I'm playing uh, to Penn next week. 31 out of 32, 316 yards. That was a terrific catch and run by Seth DeValve for 11 yards. Here's Will Powers. And Princeton is getting, you know, 8, 9, 12, 15 yards on every play. Yeah, their, their offensive line has done a great job. You know, we saw these guys earlier in the season, and this offensive line definitely has come along and matured. And there's a lot of, oh. Powers recovers his own fumble and picks up the first down. Ended up with about a five-yard gain. Will Powers, the junior from Jupiter, Florida. And, and, you know, there's a lot of pride taking place through this program, through the entire program, especially in the offense, in terms of, you know, we have a chance to be the greatest offense in the history of Princeton football. We have a chance to be the number one scoring offense in the entire country at possibly any level. I mean, these are special things. These are special numbers they're putting up. And, and these are nice things that when you come into the locker room after a long day of taking calculus and sociology and, and psychology and, and, and a writing class, you come in the locker room and you realize, you know what? Well, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons why I need to give my best effort today because we're doing something special right now. Second and six after the Dre Nelson four-yard gain. Nelson spins his way for another couple of yards. They moved away from the warp speed, and now they're just going uh, an up-tempo-ish sort of no huddle that, that you see a lot of teams do across the country. You know, the one thing I, you know, I always tell people is that when, when they get in these no huddle uh, sort of sets, and, and they want to uh, substitute, that's when you can slow them down by slowly sending your defensive substitutions on the field. Now, one of the things I'm a little surprised there, they, they went to their standard short yardage run play with Epperly. And again, I'm not telling Bobby what to do, but uh, I'm getting a little anxious about not running that young man too much right now. Miner tackled him, but it was a first down Tigers. Epperly throws incomplete, just his second incompletion. He, he's had a horrible half. He's had two incompletions, Epperly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we're not pulling him out of the game. I'm, I'm, I'm going home myself. I mean, that's his second incompletion. <laughs> well, he set such a standard that first half, you know, that uh, who would ever thought he could throw two incompletions in uh, not even the same quarter, in two <laughs> different quarters. If you're just joining us, Quinn Epperly, the Princeton quarterback, completed his first 29 passes of the game for a new national single game record. And Princeton gives it off to Joe Radigan for the first time, and he has a nice run out to the 18-yard line. And there is a lot of depth with these skill positions uh, on the Princeton team. And I'm thinking that Pops, possibly this is Quinn Epperly's last drive of the game because I know they want to play those uh, those younger quarterbacks um, or, or they're, you know, Connor, Connor is the same year. Connor's a junior also. But I know they want to play those other quarterbacks because... Personal foul. Number 40 on the defense. Half a distance of the automatic first down. Bobby Morani, the safety. Because they are, they are talented guys, and uh, if you do lose Quinn Epperly, you know, this is one of the few schools uh, in the country that could go to a, a very viable option, uh, the number two spot or the number three spot at the quarterback, uh, quarterback position. That's the play call for a touchdown. See if it works. Wilson in motion. Epperly out of the gun. 
And that is incomplete, intended for Seth DeVal, who said he caught it at the six-yard line, but the line judge says no. Tommy Meehan. Take another look. Uh, end of the ball was on the field. I think it's one of those if they would have called it complete, they wouldn't have overturned it uh, in, in 1A, but uh, they called it incomplete. Dre Nelson busts inside the five-yard line. Brett Jones, one of the tacklers, Trey Miner. It's been a long day for the Cornell defense. They've been on the field a lot. And, and the tempo in which Princeton plays will wear you down, and, and Cornell's not a very deep team on top of that. Nelson, not a big guy, and they're trying to run him inside here. And by not a big guy, I'm being generous. 5'5", 170. Atwater has not been back in there after he was dinged up in the third quarter. Field goal attempt for Nolan Beek from 20 yards out. He got it, 46-20. Princeton leads it. Tigers continue to march right down the field. 10-24 left here in the Ivy League. Dave Popkin and Casey Keeler back with you at Princeton. The Tigers lead at 46-20. 10-24 left in the fourth quarter. Princeton trying to go to six and one overall. Yale has already defeated Columbia in Ivy League play today, 53 to 12. And Brown shut out Penn, 27 nothing. So Princeton is in first place alone in the Ivy League. Those teams will play next week, Penn and Princeton. At halftime of this ball game, Princeton honored one of their all-time greats, perhaps their all-time great, Dick Kazmaier, who passed away in August. You see some of his former teammates there. There's a flag atop the end zone here. Players have stickers on their helmets. There's a number 42 on the scarves and on the field. And uh, Princeton really honoring Kazmaier this entire season. He's the only football number retired here by the Tigers. And he won the Heisman Trophy in yeah. 1951. And led his team to two undefeated seasons in a row. What an amazing career and uh, what a great honor. Standing ovation by the crowd for Kazmaier, for his family, here at Powers Field today. Matthews, set. Did he hold on to the football? Somehow he did. Ty Desiree was in there, Elijah Mitchell, some of these second teamers for Princeton making an impact. Yeah, initially some pretty good protection. Had a chance to step up in the pocket. Uh, must have been, uh, you know, a little bit of a coverage sack downfield. Couldn't find anybody open. But but initially a pretty solid job by the offensive line. And you got to get that ball out in 2.5 seconds uh, or, or less. And, and uh, Matthews couldn't get that done that time. Hagee rumbles his way forward to the 26. Still well shy of a first down. The sack was Elijah Mitchell's. His second of the year, the senior from Las Vegas. And you'll see in the course of the game, Princeton play a lot of different defenders because with the offense they run, you know, they're going to be on the field a whole lot. You know, it's, it's a quick score offense, and uh, that does put a lot of pressure on your defense. A number of starters still in there, but a couple of the backups are playing right now. Pressure by Williams, incomplete pass, intended for Shapiro. John Hill on the coverage. Inside nine minutes to go here at Princeton Stadium. The Tigers just went on top 46 to 20 on a Nolan Beak 20 yard field goal, capping a 72 yard drive. And on fourth down, Cornell just electing to punt with the ball so deep in their own end. No.
Max Lezcano. Fair catch at his own 34. We'll see who comes out to play quarterback for Princeton. 8.48 left in the ball game. Bob's the race on the Tigers, leading it 46 to 20. Back with more college football on ESPN3. Dick Kazmaier would be proud. Princeton pouring it on 46 to 20 here about midway through the fourth quarter. Bostic is the quarterback, and he throws complete to DeVal, and he is mugged out of bounds. That's the second personal foul of the game for Bobby Morani, the hard-hitting safety out of Aptos, California. Kendrick Bostic, the... After the play was over, personal foul. Number 40 of the defense, 15-yard pen automatic first down. So Kendrick Bostic is in the game at quarterback, and Epperly is resting for the Tigers. Yeah, and, and again, managing the game, Bobby Sarace is talking to that officiating crew and saying, listen, we have a conference championship game next week. You know, don't let these guys get chippy. We, we can't have any anyone get hurt because of the frustration on the other side. So these are all the kind of things you do as you, you manage a game. And this is a great example of how Princeton will chew down the clock, too. They're going to do a lot more look right now with their new quarterback in the game. Joe Radigan takes the hand, and his second carry is good for a few yards up the middle to the 34. What did you just say? They're running some look? They're, they're running some look. So what they'll do is they'll get the play from the sideline, and then they'll, they'll dummy count, hut hut, and then they'll look to the sideline to see if we're going to keep that play on, or are we going to get to a new play? There it is. Bostic looking to the sideline. And it's something that Princeton doesn't do a lot because they want to play with such a hot tempo. Bostic on the keep. What a run. Down to the 12-yard line, Kendrick Bostic, who does have more than a 10-yard per rush average this year. A little counter action. He shuffles to his left, puts his foot in the ground, and gets to the right to pull in a guard. And an offside, offside running back up, up inside that hole. So it's a little counter action with the quarterback. 21-yard gain for a first down. Bostic looks again to the sideline. Just over seven minutes to go in the, in the game. Radigan, loose, gone, touchdown. Joe Radigan, the freshman, a 12-yard scamper. Princeton eclipses 50 again. It's 52 to 20. Yeah, these are great snaps for, for Kendrick Bostic to be getting because, you know, the second most important football player on your team is your backup quarterback. And, and obviously they have a great one in Quinn Epperly. But they also have some talented young men behind them that they can win with. And uh, it's important they get enough snaps and uh, they keep on growing as football players. Um. Joe Radigan, the freshman from Naperville, Illinois, with his first career touchdown. It puts Princeton on top, 53-20. to 20. The backup offense marching right down the field. Great atmosphere for college football here at Princeton. 53 to 20, the Tigers on top, trying to go to 4-0 in the Ivy League for the first time in 18 years. They've been fantastic. Quinn Epperly started this game with 29 straight completions, setting a new FCS single game record. Beak kicks it off to the up back. Same guy as last time, Nick Bland. And he's stacked up at the 28. Dave Popkin and Casey Keeler with you. Ben Shove is our statistician today. Our entire ESPN crew. Here are some scores from the Ivy League. Yale, who we'll have here on ESPN3 versus Princeton in two weeks. Blowing out Columbia 53-12. to Here's what it did to the standings. Penn loses. So they're now in second place. Harvard 2-1. They'll play tonight. They host Dartmouth. Since Brown shut out Penn, they move up to 2-2, two and two, and they're tied with Yale. Princeton in first place alone. Destiny in their hands, trying for their first 
outright timeout championship Kristen. since 1995. The first timeout. And the Tigers call time with 7.03 left here on the fourth. They're getting some of the young guys in there now. Looks like they had 10 guys in the field. So Coach Chirace called a timeout, took a deep breath, and said, hey, it's, it's your opportunity to play. Get on out there. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to go maybe a little sloppy here at the end because you're going to get some guys on the, on the, on the game field that haven't normally played in game situations. Uh, and that's great when you can do that. It's, uh, it's nice to... Uh, be able to play as many players uh, as you can when you get a big lead, and uh, I think that's what Coach Serace is in the pro process of doing. Jeff Matthews stays in there for Cornell with his team down big in the fourth. Flushed again, Ty Desiree again. Big number 44 has made an impact. Yeah. Four-man pressure that time. And uh, when you get four-man pressure, that means you have seven guys back in, in uh, pass defense. And you know, that was a cover sack. You know, no one open down there. You also see possibly some two-man, which is not a normal defense that you'll see Princeton run. But uh, they wanted to get those receivers covered up, and they thought they might be able to get some four-man pressure. And then that means they'll have two safeties free in the back, and the, the receivers will all have man-to-man -man on them. That's a good defense if you feel you can get pressure with a four-man front, and if you, you have a quarterback who's not very mobile because so, uh, he could pull the ball down and run. So two-man, you mean basically there's double the amount of DBs as wide receivers. Desiree again with a sack for Princeton. He's been huge off the bench for Bob Serace. Yeah, everyone's locked up in a man-to-man in a -man, uh, coverage where they'll use a trail technique. In other words, they'll fight you at the line of scrimmage and then trail your hip as you run your route, knowing that they have help over top with those two deep receivers. Here's four-man pressure again, and uh, disappointing because uh, they have five to pick up four, and the, the right tackle didn't slide out to pick up the defensive end. That was just a mistake made on the offensive line in terms of identification of the front. Seventh Princeton stack today. Ian McGeary and Chris Pondo came in to finish him off. Matthews. Run out by Lescano at the 24. Still well shy of the first down. And it'll be third and forever. And you, you can only imagine the frustration Coach Archer must have because... Um, it's one thing when they overload blitz you and, and, you know, they just were better than you and they, they got you before you could get the ball off. It's another thing when you have five to block four and you don't step out and, and pick up a, a, the defender. So, um, you know, this is not how Cornell wants to end this game. They want to get a little rhythm going uh, so they can have a little momentum going into uh, their next contest. Good punt by Chris Frazier, who's been one of the MVPs on this Cornell team. Princeton will take over at their own 31 with just under five minutes to go in the ball game. Casey, from what you've seen so far this year, is there an Ivy League team that's going to beat Princeton? I don't think so. I just think they're just too athletic on the perimeter, uh, and their quarterback is too special, uh, and, they, and they play very good defense. So uh, I think they have, uh, and also they, they have some those intangibles, that, that mojo, that you know, just it's kind of oozing from them. They just they feel really good about who they are and what they're doing and how they're playing. And, and those guys, you know, when they get in our role, when you have teams like that, they can be tough to beat. New quarterback in the game for the Tigers. We've seen about five of them today. Chad Kanoff, number 10, is in. And he hands the ball off. A.J. Glass, a running back, seeing some time. See some points here. Almost 39 per game in 1950. That was the record. Tigers, including today, needed to average 31 and a half points per game, and they're at 53 right now. Oh, a bruising run. That's a heck of a run by A.J. Glass. It's the fourth time that Princeton has gone over 50 points this season. That is remarkable. Yeah, it, it really is. And as we were talking about earlier, you know, this is a team that is playing with a lot of confidence. Um, it, it, it seems like a very cohesive group. Uh, a lot of guys who uh, are very uh, don't 
They don't have a selfish bone in their body, you know. These guys will, will do whatever it takes for, for, for this team to win. And um, there's no concern on how many reps guys are getting or how many balls people catch or how many carries they get or um, what quarterbacks in the game. They just want to win. And uh, when you get a group like that, it's really a lot of fun to coach. And these guys really have a nice role going on here. I'd be really disappointed for them if they don't finish this thing off. Chad Canoff, a California product that committed to Vanderbilt, ended up here at Princeton, and they have all kinds of depth at that position. We saw the sophomore, Kendrick Bostic, and now we see Canoff with some time here in the fourth. Princeton working a lot of young guys into the game now. James Prashanti in there at receiver, Isaiah Barnes. You know, Princeton literally has four quarterbacks that you know, most of this Ivy League would take as their starter. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a credit to great recruiting. And, uh, you know, that's where we're really, it's really starting there. And, and Bobby Serres comes back, and he understands the culture. He played here. And then you have uh, uh, a guy like James Perry who played in the Ivy League, who understands what this Ivy League's all about, and Steve Herbert, who's a long, long, long-time assistant. They have a great staff, and uh, they, they've done a, a phenomenal job in recruiting. That's really where it starts. They like Malik Jackson, too, who we saw a moment ago, number 11. He's been signaling in plays all day long. He's another QB on this team. Will Powers showing some willpower, fighting, yeah. breaking tackles down to the 32. Well, and I, I was blessed during my career to have a number of teams like this that, that you know, just sort of got that momentum going and, and just felt good about themselves. And I remember that 03 National Championship team at Delaware where we had the greatest run in the history of college football in terms of uh, points scored and, and points uh, given up during during the playoffs. And it just built, built during the season. And we were 6-6 six six the year before, so you had no idea we were going to be that kind of team. And, and that's what I see with Princeton right now. I see that coming. I see um, the chemistry and, and the com camaraderie and, uh, and again, again, guys uh, really believing in, in, in you know, the coaching staff and each other. Uh, and they just go out and play hard in all phases, offense, defense, special teams. And, and they play a lot of players. And so it's fun when you play a lot of players, Dave. I mean, it, it, it means a lot of guys are engaged in the process, and um, uh, they're really in a nice role here. We've seen a lot of players today, that's for sure. Joe Radigan comes out after carrying the ball those last two plays. It's been a long day for Jeff Matthews, the senior QB, the All-America candidate was hassled, he was sacked seven times, he was hurried, he had balls batted down and intercepted. Princeton played one of their best defensive games of the season today. And it's tough on David Archer, you know, he's a first year coach, you know, took over a, a situation that he wants to change in terms of what they want to do offensively. Um, felt good about his first recruiting class, they feel really good about where they are in terms of uh, how this recruiting class is going. And it all starts with recruiting. It really does. Um, you know, when you get the horses in, it's a lot easier to draw those plays up, and they all work. So, uh, you know, he has his, you know, he has his work cut out for him. But I think he has a good vision of what he wants to do, and I think they're excited about uh, what uh, what he can bring to uh, to Cornell football. Tigers keep the ball on the ground. Two straight carries by AJ Glass. We're also seeing more subs being shuttled in by Princeton. Trevor Osborne getting some time in the ball game along with Dylan White. The big story today was Quinn Epperly. 69 yards rushing, three touchdowns on the ground. 32 for 35 through the air. 325 yards passing and three passing touchdowns. He started the game 29 for 29, a new FCS record. As you said earlier, Dave, those are video game numbers. They, they really are. Glass is stopped. That's the end of the ball game. But what a monster game it was for Quinn Epperly, Bob Serace, and the Tigers. They win it 53 to 20. Princeton snaps a three game losing streak against Cornell. They'll play at Penn next week in a big game at Franklin Field. Tigers go to 6-1, and 4-0 in the league for the first time since 1995. Cornell with the loss, 1-6, and 0-4 oh in the Ivy League. They'll have Dartmouth on the road next week.
Yeah, what a, what a big day for uh, Quinn Epperly and this entire uh, Princeton offense. And the defense showed up also, you know, going against uh, an outstanding quarterback in, in Matthews and uh, did a great job getting pressure on them. And, um, you know, for, uh, for Princeton, it's an opportunity to, to seize this opportunity. And uh, they're 4-0 right now, and they have a big one with Penn, which is a rivalry game. And Penn's coming off a stinging loss. So, um, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be an opportunity for, for Princeton to win a conference championship. And with the momentum they have right now, uh, I think they are the favorite uh, to win this thing right right here in the Ivy Leagues. Is there any doubt that Quinn Epperly will be the Ivy League Offensive Player of the Week for the fourth straight week? I'm guessing maybe National Player of the Week also. You know, I don't think there's a whole lot of guys who probably completed, uh, what did it end up being again, 28 straight? 29 straight passes. I think that's going to stick for a long time in the national record books. The alma mater plays on here on Old Nassau. Princeton victorious again. For Casey Keeler, I'm Dave Popkin saying so long from Princeton. Final score, the Tigers 53, Cornell 20. To watch an entire game on replay, as well as other games on our ESPN family of networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Thanks for watching. So long, everybody.